Right, it's Monday morning. We have a lot of things to get done this week. I'm just off, getting off the phone from my contractor and he's talking about possibly doing some pipe in a slurry now on maybe the weekend. We're supposed to get a whole week this week of dry weather. We don't want any more rain. We've had enough of rain, so the ground just needs to soak up. There is a super day there. It's a bit chilly, but there's a little bit of a wind, which is another important thing we need to get the ground to kind of soak up. So fingers crossed, all will go well. But before we do any of that, I have to carry out some maintenance in these tractors. I'm also after spotting that we have an eye leak. Bad enough one on the ground, but I see where it's coming from. There's our little problem there. That top quick attach on the spool is leaking. I hate them quick attaches. I just don't know what it is about them, but they're just forever breaking. I replaced nearly them all. If there is an alternative for them, let me know um, in the comment box because I don't know what it is about them. I just don't like them. They're all the time leaking. Um, so that's where our leak is. I have to address that. Probably have to put either, you can get a new seal into it or have to replace it again. Um, but anyway, it's something that'll have to be addressed because you can't have oil leaking like that. Another thing the mass is going to need is the air filter. It needs a fuel filter. Our mirror on that side is all fogged up. It's gone black. Um, so you can't really see much through it. So we're going to put a new piece of glass in that as well. Before we do any of that, we have to address a wee problem on the case. This stabilizer arm has sheared. Well, it hasn't really sheared. I'm after taking this side out. The pin here had sheared in half, but it's down in the shed now. I'm going to have a look at it first and I'll show you why it sheared in half. So this is our end here of our stabilizer. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to make a little bit of a bushing that fits in there because you can see this is the pin that was in. I managed to be able to get a replacement pin um, just off an old stabilizer laying in the shed. But this is the pin, you can see the amount of plate that's there. You can't have that, especially when you have a heavy item behind because no matter how much you tighten it, it's always going to play. It has worn itself into an oval shape over time. Not a good stabilizer. This is not the original that would have been on that tractor. There is another one that's on the other side. I'll show you that in a wee while. And if any of you know where I can get the original stabilizer, please let us know in the comment box below because we would like to get the original one because it is much better than these aftermarket ones if you want to call them. So let's get this fixed anyway, it'll do for a couple of weeks. So I'm just going to come along and cut a piece of this here because that works perfectly as a bushing and that pin fits nice and neatly in there. And this here will fit in there, sort of. We'll flat, have to flatten out an edge a wee bit just to get it to fit in perfectly, but it's very, very close. So that's it now, we have a little bushing. I'm going to have to grind just ever so slightly a little bit off the side just to flatten it a wee bit so it'll fit in nice and tightly. So we push that in there. What we'll do is rather than hammering it where you can turn down the edges, we'll just push it in with the vise. There we have it in place. Now, before any is mentioned, yes, I probably need a new vise. I would love to put a jaw on this one, but I can't really get a replacement jaw for it. So I'm probably gonna put in a new vise. I'm gonna keep this one. I'm certainly not gonna throw it out. I'm gonna make a set of jaws for it if I have to, and I'll put it up in a different shed, maybe up above when we get the new shed um, constructed because it's one of the good ones. The one we will put in, I don't know what make it's going to be, but it's going to be probably around the same size. I'm not gonna go for a really expensive one, but trust me one thing, that vise, could tell some stories. If there ever was anything to write a book, it would be that vice, because it's seen good times and it has seen frustration. But we have this in now. The pin should fit in there like that. There we have it. And we have a nice bushing. What I'll do now is I'll put a little bit of weld in here to fill these two holes, and that'll leave us with a nice, solid joint. Now you may wonder why, when I have a self-tilting uh, helmet for me welder, have I to lift up and down. See that light? That interferes with the sensor on the helmet, so when you're welding inside with that light so close beside you, it stops it from probably working right. So you should always keep that in mind, but it's not a safety thing because it's always dark rather than lighting up, so it always stays dark when the light's on beside it. If you want to stop that from happening, just put your hand over there before you weld, and then you will see perfectly through it. Nice clean weld around there now. We're just going to grind it down just to flatten this side because that's the side that sits up again the bracket on the tractor. We want that nice and flat. So that's what we do now.
job fix, you can tighten up the stabilizer now, and I'll be everything nice and secure. That'll do for a while, but as I said before, well, this is the original one here, and that's the way the original works. Much better, I like it. Um, as you see, it's a real small stabilizer, there's not much room between the arm and that anchor pint. This one is slightly different, I had to modify it to get it to fit. Not near as good. Or I could pick one of these up, even second hand, or if someone maybe has one laying about that's not seized and working. I mean, PM me, I would love to get my hands on one the same to match the other side. Anyway, job finished, I'm going to put this case back in the shed, out of the way, and we're going to get start work now on the big girl. You can see first of all it's covered in dust so we're going to blow it out an airline when we do get everything done i do like to look after my machinery but in this case the air filter and the diesel filter in this tractor hasn't been changed in a long time oh it should have been changed quite a while ago and the reason for that is every time i went to service this tractor i couldn't get all the bits so diesel filter all the seemed to be out of stock along with the air filter so i just blew out the air filter and just let the diesel filter alone just run fine i didn't really pass any remarks it's not really what you're supposed to do i know but I have a diesel filter for now. By God, it's going to be done this time. A lot of people ask me where I get my bits and pieces. Now, a lot of you know my machinery all comes from Lakeland Machinery. I think you know that by now. But one thing I haven't addressed is where I get my parts. Parts from my tractors. And um, where I get my filters and any part that breaks in my tractor, where I get my parts from. Well, it's quite simple. I buy my parts from John Connotys in Kells. Um, it's online. If you just want to type in John Connotty, you will find it. There'll be a link in the description for all these parts we're going to use today. But I've been buying of John Connotys since I was a wee wee small lad. I'm not that anymore and it's a long long time since I was but my father was buying of him before me and we've always got a good service from them and the parts which is most important are always very competitively priced. Now with Covid things have changed people don't want to be going into garages and standing in queues waiting to get parts so all you have to do now is go online. They have an absolute excellent online service to sell internationally. Aaron's only a real small part of what they sell to. I was in it about a month ago, picking up a part from a case actually, a little pipe, I'll, I'll show you that in a little while. Um, and I had to stand outside for about 45 minutes. There was a big queue. When I got in, I was talking to John. I said, Jesus, this, this COVID is a bit of a pain in the backside and you have to wait and you have to wait outside shops. He says, well, it could be made a lot easier. People don't realize, he said, if you go on the website, even you are coming into the shop to pick it up, go on the website, pick whatever you want. If you can't find the part number for what you want, just ring us, we'll give you the part number. Or you then go in the website, pay for it online and click collect in store. Rather than deliver it to your house, you can go into the store then in a few hours and pick the item up, sit on the counter, ready to go. It just saves so much time. It also makes it a lot safer for our staff during COVID and for yourself because you're not standing in queues waiting because they do be really, really busy. And any of you have ever been down there know exactly how busy they do be. But this time I didn't collect the stuff. I actually bought it online. I paid for the delivery, got the parts ordered at 11 o'clock and the following day, the parts were delivered by DPD, which was super fast. You can't really beat that kind of service and everything's here now. I didn't have to waste my time going to buy the parts. Everything's here in this box that I want. Another thing that I bought, I'll show you in a little while at the end of this video, is I bought a clutch for this tractor. And all of you know the clutch is gone in this tractor. Well, it's on its way out. It's still putting in silage, but I wouldn't do anything else with it. Silage is all it's going to do, and I'm taking it really, really handy to try and just get through the whole silage and be finished with that before we have to start splitting it down and putting a new clutch into it. But I bought the clutch because a lot of you know with Brexit and things, parts are hard to get and there's no doubt about it. So I just wanted to have it here so that it's in the box, ready to go if it does let me down and I don't have to start trying to order it and maybe wait for a month or two for the thing to come in because that's how bad it is at the moment. So as you can see, this is the way my parcel came. Stamped from Connaties, you can see there yourself. So www.johnconnity.com is where I have all of the parts and everything is well packed. I have all my filters here. I have filters for the case as well. So some of this is for the case and some of it's for the Massey. First job we're going to do on this tractor is we're going to address this diesel filter. Straight into that now and get it replaced. not too bad but it is black and it does have bits of dirt on it as you can see there. 
So definitely worthwhile changing that. One thing I'm going to do is take this down and blow it out with the airline, clean that sediment bowl out, put this new seal on, then the chem with the air filter too. That's that in place. There's nothing complicated about putting a diesel filter on these. Just take your time, think what you're at, and it's quite straightforward. Definitely a job anyone can tackle themselves. Do you see this front light? Well, it's completely gone on that tractor. Um, the other one's perfectly fine, but this one is completely full of condensation. The whole back lens is all corroded as well. So we got a new light to put into that place, so we're going to do that now. So they're little adjusters that actually adjust the beam of light to different parts of the road, just the same as you'd have in a car. Um, so we need to loosen them off and just slide the light out. And hopefully that will help. No, probably not. That one's seized, isn't it? I think the bottom was okay. Yeah. Now, I think you'll agree now that looks, apart from the gloves, looks way better. Nice, crisp, clean new lens, it's probably plenty of good light. Next job, we place the glass on this mirror over here. Be really careful to spray this rubber off. Careful not to squeeze in the glass because it is very brittle. Now, glass should pop out. Yeah, that's the last out. That's it, in its place. That actually was quite an easy job. I didn't realize that would be so easy. I thought it was gonna really fight me, but it hasn't. Definitely worth doing. So now we're just gonna set that up on the tractor, but so at least we have nice clean glass and that's gonna leave it a lot safer when you're looking behind you, rather than looking out through a clouded thing actually that was providing no service for me at all. Very cheap to replace and very easy to do. So there's no reason why anybody couldn't tackle that job themselves and leave themselves with nice clean mirrors. So now what we've done is I took the radiators out, blew them all out. There was a lot of old crap actually in the radiators. Blew them out. I didn't do the air filter. The air filter that I ordered is the wrong one. It's my mistake. I put the wrong part number in. It's actually probably the one for the Cisco engine, not the Perkins engine. So it was ever so slightly different. So I didn't change it. I blew out the one that was there. I'm going to return the one that's there and get a new one in this place. Another thing I don't have to do in this tractor is change the oil because the oil was only done there very recently so it does not need to be done yet. We'll be doing that probably in another couple of months so there's no need to touch that but I will be going around topping up all the fluids, checking everything through to make sure everything's right and greasing up everything as well and just giving it a general check over to make sure everything's good and then she'll be ready to rock now for slurry. So I'm going down now to put in a bit of silage in the lower houses here for the cattle for the night. I'm going to start milking tomorrow morning I'm going to put on the agitator. I'm going to put a new seal in that agitator because the lower seal is letting some of the slurry up right up to the pump. And I'm nearly positive that it's the lower seal that's doing it. So we're going to put a new seal in it so it's all greased up and checked over and ready to go too. So that's what we get at. We pick this up in the morning. So it's the following morning. And before we start into fixing the agitator, another thing is Auto Sparky has come of the day to work on our tanker. He's going to be putting LED lights in it. I don't know if we'll get into this video. It all depends what way the schedule kind of works. But one thing I do want to do is I want to address this problem because it seems to be getting a lot worse quite rapidly. It is a known fault 
for a seal to go in there and it is also a very known fault for this pipe here to collapse so we want to try to see if we can get in here and get it loosened there's not much room but hopefully we can get in get it loosened and get it replaced So quite an easy thing to take off, no big deal, just screw it off and screw the other one on its place. Do you see that? See the way it's half blocked with dirt? So that ain't good, that's certainly not good. We have a new one here to go in its place, it's not an expensive part so it's definitely worth putting on. If you have a tractor like this I do suggest, if you can at all, put a new one of these on because you'll find that if it is the original one that's on before, it's on a long time and it's done a lot. A lot of fuel has passed through it and them seals have a good chance there could be, like mine, in a bad way. You definitely don't want to over tighten these. Just nice and snug and that's it, that's all you need to do. Hey ho, we have her. I was thinking there for a while we'd have to remove the alternator to get at it, but I think we're just about going to get it. There we go. Now, do you see that pipe? Do you see that kink that's in it there? I don't know if the camera picks it up, open, but there's a nasty little kink just right there. And that is definitely restricting the diesel. You're getting it from the fuel filter up into the fuel pump. Definitely restricting it. So we have a new one here with no restrictions on it, and hopefully we'll put it in place. If you're having trouble getting one of those, my suggestion is, and this is this one's still second hand, I would like to get a new one put on it eventually, to get someone who can attach these two ends um, onto a steel pipe and put that on in this place. Have a much better long lasting job if you have that done. There we go. So one thing I will say is don't screw this in fully because there's going to be air on the system now obviously because we've opened it. So you screw it in until them holes, see these holes here? If you look, there's ho two holes there for bleeding it. So all you do then is pump, let the diesel come through. There it comes. Just tighten up your nut now. Now you may be okay, the air in this, you have to still be careful, there could be still air in this, but we're gonna give it a try and see what that does. Just finish off tightening this. Next thing to do, start the tractor up. It'll probably take a little bit of time, maybe to start. It might just start first time. But I'm glad there's a vital little pipe there to get changed and that primer pump for the price of them they're not expensive and it's definitely worthwhile changing that too so that's a nice little couple of things done to the side of that tractor because I badly know it needed it so I'm going to start up now let it run for a little bit make sure there's no airlocks and then we get on to another little job that we want to do which is fit a new mirror arm and mirror to the side of this door which never had one since I bought it <laughs> But it started much, much quicker than it would normally start. And I know Jerry6420 is going to say, well, if you had a bought John Deere, you wouldn't have them come. Yes, there's nothing wrong with John Deere's. They're exceptionally good for making tractor lawnmowers. I will give them that much. These things are essential to do. And if you have a case 895 or anything around that 800 series, check that pipe on the side, because I didn't know about it until the mechanic told me to check. He had seen a lot of them come in with just a simple little problem with that pipe was causing a serious bit of harm to the tractor. But I have to say, she was cold, she's sitting there from last night. And that's it, I didn't heat her there this morning, she just started, boom, straight away. And that's the first time, I will admit it, that she started as sharp as that there without heat. Because it was warmish today, it's not really warm, but it was cold last night. And I have to say, she has struggled to start in the past week. Even when she was running, she was running rough, and I knew she was been starved of fuel that was the problem. So a cheap little fix, only a few euro. Boom, she's back in order there now. Next thing we're gonna do is gonna fit a new mirror and an arm to the side of the tractor. It was a bit of a problem, blind spot, and it doesn't even have a mirror inside, but you're gonna fit one of them as well. It's missing one in there too. I know, not for looking at myself, I'm looking behind me of course. So girls, what have we got? We have an arm. I suppose the first thing we have to do is stick this arm on. Little bucket of nuts that they have all the time in boats. And we're out here and we're bound to find something that's going to fit. Yeah, that looks like it. Yeah, there we are.
That's a nice little thing. You wouldn't believe how handy a mirror is and you'd miss it an awful lot when you don't have it. The one on this side is in great, needs to be taken apart and kind of unseized. For some reason, this kind of a hinge here has got, someone has stuffed stuff into it. It must have been just fully tightened, but I'm gonna take that apart and see exactly what is causing the issue because if it is broken, we'll just put a new mirror onto it as well to match the other side. So that's another little job completed on the case. I don't need to change the oil or diesel on this case for a long time yet. It's not that terribly long since it was done, so it's fine. And the same with the Massey. You can see last night, I took the polisher to the Massey. I have a polishing machine down the house I haven't used in a long time, but you can see the difference. Look at the shine. Compared to the dull paint, the shine, the dull paint. So tonight, after making, I'll take a bit of time and I'll do another bit of it and probably do the top and the other side because I was really impressed with the difference that it made because you can see the real shine. Look, the paint's not perfect on this tractor. But you see that made a huge difference, a huge difference if you go on the other side and have a look. Even here you can see how dull it is compared to how nice and shiny it is on this side. So one other little job I need to do on this case is replace the air filter in the cab. So we have two air filters, one on this side, one on the far side. So we'll just show you this side being done and you kind of get the idea. So that's what we're going to do next. I go over here to our box, which is in the sewer at the moment. This is our air filter. The cold's just picking up the nuts and bolts side through all over the floor. Good woman to cold. <laughs> she does not like that job. I wouldn't blame her neither would I. Oh dear, it's an old filter. It is well past its sell by date. It's not a big issue. Not a big issue for me because the air condition in this cab isn't working. It was working when I bought it. It's something I have to fix. There's nothing wrong with the actual system itself. It's more the wiring. Someone really got in there, as I said before, and done a real rooting job on this tractor, but I'm hoping someday I'll get time to go over the wiring correctly and fix all the problems. I think I know what's wrong with the air condition and the heater on this tractor, and it's all down to a switch. Um, it nearly put the tractor afire a couple of weeks after I bought it. That's why I put the cutoff switch down the bottom that's turned off every night, because I just don't trust it at all. But we put this new filter in and one in the far side, and We'll hopefully, when I get a chance after slurry and everything's done, we'll take this cab apart properly and fix a lot of wiring issues that I know are there and really do need to be addressed pretty soon. There we are. Nice new filter. Put the filter cover back on now and job completed. And all we have to do is do the same thing over on the far side. I'm not going to bother showing you that. It's just the exact same thing again. But as I said before, it's only the start of a big journey of getting this whole cab rewired and all this electric system all working safely as it should the front lights are still not working either alan from audio sparky is coming the day and he's probably going to have a quick look at that as well and just see what exactly is wrong um with them front lights because i know it's only simple we have a new relay for it but again it's just a wiring issue and i'm going to let him have a look at it first before we touch it as i said before we're going to address this seal problem here now and i've never done the seal in one of these before it should be relatively simple but what's happened is there's a lot of slurry going up the stem between the shaft and the cover and it's making its way up ever so slightly and coming out just at the top now there's two reasons for that it could be that the seal in here is worn it's just a little rubber sleeve that's all it is getting the old one out might be a bit of an issue but hopefully it'll not be too bad we've to kind of get it out but there's another one up here and i'm hoping it's not that it's a little bit more complicated to get at so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to address this one then we'll use the agitator because it doesn't really affect it an awful lot to be honest with you, you can use away at it but it makes a bit of a mess especially all around where you're working so i'm going to just take it off here fix this one we'll use the agitator and if it's still leaking We'll have to take it apart and we'll have to do the other one at the top as well. Did I forget one? Yep, I forgot one. So the seal we want to replace is this one here. I have a new one there sitting ready to go and it's been sitting there for a couple of months now, but I need to actually probably lift the shaft up to kind of get it sitting in the right place so it's not anywhere close to the ground, kind of prop it up till it's sitting kind of in the middle and we can hopefully slide this by out. And I have a feeling it's gonna be a lot harder than it looks. It's an easy 
job. Anybody can do it. Yeah. Well, it wasn't that easy a job. That rubber was sealed in. And I suppose the best way of probably doing it would have been to drop off the propeller, take off the back of it. And I wasn't going to do that because that propeller would be kind of seized on at this stage. So I took some tools to it you should never take to an agitator. I said some words you should never say in front of children. But we got it. Tore apart and we got it out in one big lump at the end. And it just fought us the whole way. But anyway, we have it off. All we have to do now is clean it out first inside and then slip in the new rubber. Right, we're starting to suck diesel now, or molting it in. This is by anything an easy job. And I know there's probably going to be people saying, that's not the way you do it, is, and this is not the way you do it. And put it this way to you. You're entitled to make your own video and show me how it's done, because it's very easy to explain these things, board them out. When you go to do it, it can be a different story altogether. But I think we're making kind of headway. What do you think, girls? No. no. The girls have no faith in me whatsoever, so. As you can see, the vice grips, you know now why it's one of the handiest things on the farm. The girls have no faith in me whatsoever. I proved them wrong once again. And we have it in, although it was the, let's just say the messiest job probably we've done in a long time, but we got it in. That's all that matters. We didn't damage anything. We just said a few bad words. And well, I said a few bad words, but at the end of the day, seal is in, job's done. And now I can see that the shaft has no movement, um, which it did have before and plenty of it. Um, so it definitely was well worn down and it was time to change it and it was the culprit that was letting the slurry up too far up on and out on the top so now it's in put the cover back on we're going to grease this baby up and get it ready for slurry 2021 hopefully Right, job done. It's so easy to ground a bit of a grease gun and just put a little bit of dab of grease on every little bit of a thing, every moving part that's there. It only takes a few minutes. It's something on a lot of farms that get overlooked. People just don't have the time and just don't take the time to ground and grease um, any of the stuff they have on their farm. And just, it can never understand that. It's the cheapest thing you could put into a machine and it's gonna save you a world of money in the long run if you look after just a little bit of grease here and there. Uh, it just, it's vital, it's vital. So I've done the shaft, done the hardy spicer, done the connection, done the rotor that's in here behind the plastic, another important thing to do, and it keeps the shaft in all in good condition. So that's ready to go. I notice another thing that is missing on this particular shaft, and that's the chain. I'm gonna get a new chain. I have actually a half a shaft sitting somewhere that I haven't used. I'm gonna take the chain of that, I'm gonna put it onto this. But that's something I didn't see, and it must have broke off the last time it was being used last year and that has to be addressed so it's just what i say again you have a little check around you find little things that is broke but if you don't fix it kind of soon what'll happen is you'll be under pressure someday you'll hook it up to a tractor you'll be in a rush and you'll say oh, i'll fix it i'll just do this job and that's it and i'll fix it then after that and that's where accidents believe it or not can happen that's where a lot of the accidents happen so you spot it fix it and that's exactly what i'm going to do one thing before i do go if you happen to notice i spent last night with the buffer rubbed it down with compound first and then run it over with the buffer machine that I have. Just old auto gleam, I think it was, um, compound that they used. It's laying in the shed this years, and it probably was gone off. I didn't care. It looked better than the actual mud guards. You can see the state of the mud guards. Pink with oxidization, and they just need to be done as well. A good rubbing down compound will bring them up nicely. But I was so, so impressed with the way it came up because it just changed the whole look. It took years off it. Um, even that new headlight on the front just helped it out so much. That's it, at least you know now, that's where we get all our bits and pieces for our tractors and things like that, any serviceable parts for our tractors. That's it, at least you know now, always loads of questions about where we get the bits and pieces for our tractors. You know we buy our machinery, mostly off Lakeland machinery and any bits and pieces for them, but for our tractors, our filters, any serviceable parts, any parts at all, mechanical wise, for each of our tractors, that's where we buy it. John Connotys, we've always have. 
you have a bit of time to spare tonight and you're looking for bits and pieces and you want to just price something, just head on over there. The link will be in the description. I'll just add it to it and all you have to do is click on that link. It'll bring you directly into their website and hopefully that'll help you out if you're looking for something similar. Hopefully, we're going to get started out. We've a really, really busy week coming. We're going to be also vaccinating our cows for leptospirosis. We've just a real busy day. Tomorrow is Saturday. Sunday, we're hoping to do the whole vaccination of the cows because it tends to be a nice, quiet day. Everybody's off work and we can just take into it and get it done in a couple of hours and that is one of the things I want to get done also I'll be going outside and I'll be starting to fix up the fences electric fences and things and get them all up and running because we will be thinking of putting our cows out a lot of cows are out I just thought it was a little bit cold ground is still very very wet so we have loads of good quality silage there would love to see them outside definitely would like to see it in the milk tank too but I'm just going to hold off a little while longer because when I put them out, I would hate to have to bring them back in again. And the weather next week is looking like that's exactly what I would have had to do. Just before we finish today's video, I'd like to first of all say a huge thanks to each and every one of you. We have hit 30,000 subscribers. Awesome. I think we hit it last Sunday actually after our video went up and it just made my day. So thank you each and every one of you for that. This YouTube channel has really surprised our family. It has brought a whole new world to our doorstep. We've met some absolutely brilliant, brilliant people. I have to tell you a little tale about how this YouTube channel started. It was more or less a bet that I put with my kids just to show them if you put your mind to something, put a little bit of work into it, you can really achieve anything you want to achieve. I first of all told them, I'll set a target, 10,000, one year. Let's see, can we do it? The girl said, not a hope. Basically, I taught myself not a hope. But I wanted to prove a point and I stuck to it. I put the work in and I think the first year we were at 20, what, 20,000 in a room, 20,000. I just love the fact that the kids got to see that and it gives them a little bit of an insight of as they grow up in years to come and anybody that's watching. If you want to achieve something, go out there and achieve it. It is definitely 100% doable. Everything is doable. There's just a little bit of work attached to it, but if your mind's in it, you will achieve it. Sorry about the calves. Roaring is near milking time, but I just wanted to get this in before I milked. This is very important. And all I'd like to say as well, especially to you little guys out there that are watching, don't let everyone ever put you down. When I started off this YouTube channel, I was talking to a couple of guys, well formed in YouTube, and they told me when you start to get above a certain amount of views and you start, your channel starts to do a lot better, you will get people to start coming in and writing up comments and things on your channel. Now and again, the better you do, the more of them you'll get. I didn't mind that. That's something you'll see in everyday life. I didn't really get it. It didn't really happen. It never really happened, thankfully enough. The only minor things we got was we started buying a few items to the farm. We bought a new slurry tank and we bought a couple of bits and pieces for our loader as well. And I noticed a couple of people started saying, well, you're a farmer. How can you afford to buy things like this? And so this is only a shopping channel. Things like this was all fired at us. And it was only a couple of individuals that kept doing it over and over again. Funny enough, they'd be very quick to criticize, but, but never to brag you. So my message to you is, and I set this as an example to my kids at home, is don't worry about people who will try to pull you down. The better you're doing in life, the more people that will try to pull you down and pull you down to their level they will try to do. Worst thing you could possibly do is say anything or retaliate or get into a conversation with it. But don't bother doing that in life because that is basically bullying and that's what goes on on a lot of social media sites and it happens with young kids, it happens with adults, it happens with everybody. But my advice to you is, don't ever let it get to you. It doesn't happen to us very often, but when it does, I laugh at it, I hit that block button, and bye bye. A lot of stuff that we buy, including machinery and things like that, comes from hard work. Since I was 10 years old, I was working flat out on the farm. My kids, 10, 11, flat out on the farm. They're just doing a repeat of what I did when I was younger. Since I was that age, I've worked on several different farms, anything from 140 cows to 90 cows, managing a couple of different farms. Never been a time where I haven't been working and earning my own money. I'm an independent person. I don't know if that comes across in the channel. I have to physically earn something before I can appreciate it. So a lot of work goes into it. My wife is the same. She works night and day, so we never take any time off. The last time we had a holiday or got on a plane, was 14 years ago when it was our honeymoon when we got married. And that's the last time we left this country. A holiday, once every two years, maybe for a couple of days, and that's about it. Meals, expensive meals, expensive night outs, they just don't happen. The money we make goes into the farm, goes into our kids. We don't tend to spend an awful lot on ourselves, really, unless it's attached to what we're actually working on to make life a little bit easier. So we walk 
basically very hard for what we got and that's a good incentive to anybody if you want something as I said before get out there put the work in don't begrudge others who have it when you haven't put the work in yourself put the work in and you can achieve absolutely anything you want study at school there's loads of time for farming when school is over school is the number one important thing in your life and make sure you get a good education and then at least all doors is open for you later on in life but there is something to suit everybody you just have to find what makes you happy having just said that we have actually made a couple of more purchases our hour is gone it's gone back to lakeland machinery we only used it for a couple of hours it just didn't suit what we want so there's a brand new harrow coming so that'll get the producers going again so <laughs> just let her at it thanks very much for watching our channel and thank you for supporting us over the last 15 16 months however it's been it's been an incredible journey and it's only the start of our mission and that is to bring a bit of joy out of this whole COVID situation into your living room just to give you a bit of info of what farming is actually really like and I keep calling it a family farm because we're not at an industrial size where we're just overworked and our cattle is just an income to us and sadly around the world you see a lot of that happening these are the family farms that are kind of everywhere all over Ireland and most farmers you will come across and most I mean nearly all farmers you'll come across are really passionate about what to do and the rubbish that you read about farmers is not true there are a small majority in every walk of life and in every occupation who pull down that occupation give farmers a chance go work for a farmer and don't go in with your eyes closed open your eyes and just actually take the time to give them a chance and you'll see yourself that farming is actually a passionate thing it's something is a labor of love it's never a job it is a lifestyle and it's something you should appreciate because without farmers there is no food and there will be no future so folks as always if you haven't subbed and you like what you're watching hit that sub button give us a like you can follow us on instagram facebook and tiktok until next one folks we'll talk to you again